Chaudhary. I'll be speaking about introduction to the Earth's magnetic field or introduction to the magnetism as is applied to the ship's magnetic compass. So now, in a study of this magnetic field, let us first try and understand what are these poles. Poles are of two types. One is dip poles and other one is geomagnetic poles. There are yet the third type of poles that are uh, known to us and that is the geographic poles. Geographic poles are of course the points at which the Earth's axis of rotation cuts the surface of the Earth. Geomagnetic pole would be formed by a dipole which is placed inside the Earth representing the Earth's magnetic field and would cut the surface of the Earth. The two points which are diametrically opposite will be called geomagnetic poles. Dip poles with which we are more concerned are the practical poles are the points on the surface of the earth where the dip is 90 degrees or dip poles are the points at which the magnetic field would be vertical. If we say a field can be divided in two components that is a horizontal component and the vertical component then the dip poles are the point at which the vertical component is maximum that is z is maximum and probably h is zero. On the other hand, magnetic equator will be represented by a line on the surface of the earth where z would be zero. Now when we want to understand the magnetic effect on the magnetic compass, we must understand that there are two types of material on board. One is soft iron which gets induced magnetism and other one is hard iron which gets permanent magnetism. Now this permanent magnetism is set within the ship at the time of construction when the ship is at the yard. Now this permanent magnet will sit in within the ship depending on, on what direction the ship was built. For example, if the ship was built like this or a yard like this, the ship's magnet will make a blue here, red here. So accordingly, we can say there is a blue pole aft, there is blue pole on the starboard side, there is red pole forward and red pole on the port side. And depending on whether the ship was built in northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere, the ship will have a blue pole on top or the red pole on top. Now, this permanent magnet does not change its polarity, color, etc. when the ship goes from one place to other place. My today's talk, I will basically dedicate on the induced magnetism. Now, induced magnetism, uh, to understand this induced magnetism, let us say this is Earth and somewhere in say 65 degrees south, we have Earth's south magnetic dip pole and somewhere in 85 degrees north, we have north dip pole. Now these poles are not diametrically opposite to each other. If the signal travels, it travels from south pole to north pole. So if you have a ship in southern hemisphere or if you have a ship in northern hemisphere, let us see what is the difference. In southern hemisphere, the signal enters the keel first and wherever the signal enters the ship, it will make that area blue. So can we say the ships in southern hemisphere have got blue keel and red deck and if we have and if we have say funnel or mast then these masts will have or the funnels will have the red top whereas in the northern hemisphere if you have a funnel here or a mast here it will have blue top the signal enters from top so the deck will be of blue color and the keel will be of red color this is the convention we will follow then you have girders and you have beams. Now all these will make induced magnets. The induction will set in and as the signal travels from south to north, wherever it hits these components first will make blue pole or the other side of these conductors, the red pole will be formed. So we can say uh, the magnetic field which has got horizontal and vertical component will affect the horizontal conductors or the vertical conductors on the ship. Later on we will study these conductors 
under 9 rods. Now what is important to understand here is the magnetic field has got two components that is a horizontal component and vertical component. Horizontal component always travels from south to north. So whether you talk about northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere by convention H is always positive. Now if we talk about the vertical component, vertical component represented by Z travels upwards in southern hemisphere and downwards in northern hemisphere. The convention is in southern hemisphere Z is negative and in northern hemisphere Z is positive. So if we look at the signal in northern hemisphere, the combined field is this way and the angle with respect to horizontal is called dip. So this is total field which is divided in two components or broken in two components H and Z and the direction of total field by which it is dipped below the horizontal is called dip. So tan of dip is equal to Z upon H. In northern hemisphere Z is positive, in southern hemisphere Z is negative. Accordingly in northern hemisphere dip is positive and in southern hemisphere dip is negative. So total field is actually under root H square plus Z square. Now the unit of the magnetic field is Tesla. Tesla is Weber per meter square. It is the SI unit. Now it represents the magnetic field density. We will call it magnetic induction. Now just to understand what is this Weber per meter square or Tesla, let us say we talk about Bremen. In Bremen we might say that the H is about 8 and Z is 28. It means generally in Bremen we have uh, a dominance of vertical field compared to horizontal field. Probably it is because it is close to the north magnetic pole. On the other hand, if we talk about say Singapore, we might have Z of about 4 and H as 27. Now the induction on board or the magnets which are formed on the board, they will cause what is called deviation. Deviation is made up of five subcomponents or subdeviations or partial deviations. They are studied under five headings and they are called coefficients. Coefficient A, B, C, D, E. Depending on the type of deviation, the property of deviation, it is categorized under various headings. For example, the coefficient A is the type of coefficient which will give deviation which is same on all the headings the error or the partial deviation which will not depend on the heading it will remain same on all the headings whereas coefficient b and c are semicircular deviation semicircular deviation means they will depend on the cosine or sine for the ship's head coefficient d and e are called quadrantal deviation because these coefficients the deviation which they give they become maximum or zero four times in 360 degrees. Now deviation is one kind of error and variation is another kind of error. Variation is actually dependent on place. Variation is the angle between the geographic meridian and magnetic meridian at a particular place. Whereas deviation is the angle between the magnetic meridian and the compass meridian. Now compass meridian will be same as magnetic meridian if the ship was made up of wood and there was no ferromagnetic material. But because of ferromagnetic material of the ship and because the ship heading in different direction, uh, there is different deviation which is caused on different headings. And that's why the magnetic heading is different than compass heading. Now variation at a place can be found out from the compass rows on Mercator chart. It also gives annual rate of increase or decrease of the variation. Now this partial deviation is understood with the study of coefficient. Coefficient A, B, C, D, E. What are they? Well, coefficient is the maximum value of a particular family or category of deviation, which is possible. So coefficient is represented in plus or minus of a degree, whereas deviation which is caused because of coefficient is represented as east or west.